AI is the general purpose technology here. It allows to build agents that are doing things on your behalf. And in that respect, it can be used in any vertical uh, of the industry. It can be used for services, for public services. Uh, it can be used to change the life of citizens. Uh, it can be used for agriculture. It can obviously be used for uh, defense purposes. So it covers everything that a state needs to worry about. And so in that respect, it's very natural that uh, any state makes it a priority and makes it uh, uh, and find a dedicated national AI strategy. By the way, everything Arthur said is 100% correct. It is also exactly the reason why everybody's given up. And it's precisely wrong. And the reason for that is this. Uh, if it's a general purpose technology and one company can build the ultimate general purpose th technology, then why shouldn't anybody else do it? And that is the flaw. Right. But that's also the mind trick mm. to convince everyone that this is a technology that intelligence is only, you know, something that a few people ought to go right. build. Everybody ought to sit back and wait for it. I would advise that everybody engage AI hmm. and that it, this is not not for the privileged uh, intelligence is for everyone and it is not just a few companies in the world who should build it everybody should build it nobody's going to care more about uh, the Swedish culture and the Swedish language and the Swedish people and the Swedish ecosystem more than Sweden nobody's going to care about the the ecosystem of Saudi Arabia more than Saudi Arabia and nobody's going to care about it, about Israel more than Israel, despite the fact that the technology is general purpose and absolutely true. How could intelligence not be general purpose? Um, it is also it is also hyper specialized, hmm. and the reason for that is because let's face it, I don't think I'm waiting around for a general purpose chatbot uh, to be an expert in a particular area of disease. I still think that I would prefer to have somebody who is hyper specialized in that field uh, to fine tr fine tune to train, you know, and uh, post train, if you ah, will, right. an AI model that's going to be specialized in that. Why are open models such a big part of your focus? Because it's an horizontal technology, and um, enterprises and states are going to be eventually willing to deploy it on their own infrastructure. Mm. Uh, having this uh, openness is, is important from a sovereignty perspective. That's the first point. And then the second point uh, of importance is that uh, releasing open source models is a way to accelerate progress. Mm. And uh, we created Mistral on the basis that what we've seen during our early career when we were doing AI in between 2010 and 2020, uh, was an acceleration of progress because every lab was building on top of each other. And that's something that kind of disappeared uh, with the first large language models uh, mm. from OpenAI in particular. And so spinning back that open flywheel of I contribute something and then another lab is contributing something else. Right. And then we iterate from that is the reason why we created Mistral. And I think we, we did a good job at it because we, we started to release models and then Meta started to release models as well. Right. Uh, and then we had Chinese company uh, like DeepSeek release uh, stronger models and everybody benefit from it. So coming back to Mistral Nemo of um, one difficulty of uh, creating AI models in an open way mm. is that this is more a cathedral than a bazaar setting uh, right. when it comes to open source because you have large spend to do to build a model and so what we did with nvidia team is really to 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 mix the two teams together mm. have them work on the same infrastructure the same code have the same problems and combine their expertise to build the same model and that has been very successful uh, because nvidia brought a lot of things we didn't know i think we brought things that nvidia didn't know and at the end of the day we produced something that was at the time the best model uh, for its size right and so we really believe in such collaborations and we think that uh, we should do them more and at a higher scale. And not only with only two uh, companies, but probably with three or four. And that's the way open source is going to prevail. Yeah, I completely agree. The, the um, benefit of open source, uh, in addition to accelerating and elevating the basic science, the basic endeavor, um, of all of the general models and the general capabilities is the open source versions also activate a ton 
of niche markets and niche right. innovation. Uh, all of a sudden, healthcare, life sciences, physical sciences, uh, robotics, transportation, the number of industries that were activated as a result of open source capabilities that are sufficiently good is incredible. Don't ignore the, the incredible capabilities of, of open source, particularly in the fringe, the niche. Niche, you know, the, but mission critical where data might be sensitive. Yeah, it could be, for example, in mining energy. Right. Who's going to go create an AI company to go mine energy? Energy is really important, but the mining of energy is not that big of a market. Hmm. And so open open source activates every single one of them. Financial services, it turns out, activates them. Healthcare, you know, health, defense. You, you pick your favorites. 